my camera today. Let me take care of that real quick. Don't need this Visual Studio up anymore. Okay, there we go. All right. Hey, hey, it just worked when I plugged it in. Very nice, people. I thought I was going to have to restart the stream, but I did not have to restart the stream. Kudos to everyone for that. Very nice. OBS people, you know, the whoever wrote the driver for this uh, this device everyone kudos okay so that's all set up and and running um, let's get to it so I gotta just reset everything because this is from uh, something else let's see uh, da, 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 do. let's pop open that switch over to the new I'm using the white color scheme now by the way let me turn off these notifications so that Drake bot and whatnot does not distract me a bit. Okay, now, um, let's see, we need the Lexer and the Lexer types, and we need the test experiment and the new Lexer. And the Lexer FSMS, and the generator, and the tables. All right. So, let me tell you guys what I've been thinking about. I'm very excited, as usual, to get back to this because this is a very fun little side project. <sighs> um, what's fun about this side project is that. Uh, it's very fun. That's what it is. So, um, today, what I want to fix, first of all, some of these things are gone. Like, we don't need that because that's just a part of the table. That's, um, we have the int FSM. Actually, it's right in front of my face. This right here, it now encodes that information. This equivalence class table and this lookup table for the states, that is that. So, those are gone. I think the same thing with float suffixes. Well, how do I do float suffixes, I wonder? Do I have a thing that tests little f and big f and little l and big l? Um, yeah, so that's float suffixes, which is fine. So there we go. So the things that we still are sort of we're punting on, not doing through a finite state machine, um, let's take a look at those. So um, there's all of these different keyword strings. For one thing, keywords. Okay. Um, so specifically, um, right here, we're doing. We're looking up. We're after the finite state machine. We then go back through. Um, Yeah, we have a table that does, does this if it's um, we're in a body, the if of a body or the body of an if, right? Because you can use this operator, but only during um, this preprocessor to find, right? So there's that. Um, let's see what else is there. Um, After that, we check for the Boolean type, and then after that, we have Q. 
keyword flag there and there's different types of token types that we get so um, if I go back up to token um, keyword I believe yeah there's all these different keyword types there's other linkage access declaration cast flow qualifier modifier type and then all of these things um, which also actually come from they're like not keyword types at all except they are well, they're still keyword types but they're not they don't have the key there right so they're not types of keywords they actually are operators and things so um, what I want to do is preserve the output as I was before but move towards oh do I still need this I think I've eliminated the need for the operation strings to be listed out like this Um, I think these are also handled. Let me update my um, build.bat so that it runs this experiment stuff now. Awesome. And that should mean that the tables need to be reloaded. Okay. But they're the same. They're all good. Alright, so the other thing that we aren't doing yet is this preprocessor stuff. And that's also kind of nasty, because what you can have is you can have things like, and I do this sometimes, it'd be like, if thingy space define thing as thingy, and else define thing, not a thing, right, at all, and if. And you can see what I've done is I've used like little spaces in there, and I can maybe put like two spaces on each one or whatever, you know, and that's all actually valid. Um, it's still a define. So I have to skip those spaces. And so I'm doing that manually after I've determined that I have a preprocessor string um, to begin with, right? After I have a preprocessor directive. And we could really um, actually make all of that work a little bit more like the main loop with more finite state machines. I think we'd get even more speed up than 1.4 speed up because that's just doing a pretty dumb, like, search through that list of strings right now. So that's probably where most of our time is going is checking against keywords and preprocessors now. But even if that's not where the time is going, I want to convert it over so that it's all one unified system. So um, I'm not, I haven't actually measured which things are faster and slower, so I don't actually have the right to say that I believe that it's faster. But I'm going to say that I believe that it's faster if I do this. Or I, 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 can't, I don't have the, what I should say is I don't believe I have the right to say that that's what's slowing us down, but I suspect it and I want to change it anyway. So we're going to change it and we'll see, we'll see from the results if it's actually faster. But it'll be easier for me to maintain this way too, I think. Okay, so having said all of that, I'd like to build the finite state machine. Um, for the preprocessor first. So, lspp. What is this? What is this crap? What is going on here? Oh, that's right. We get the lspp. Okay, so what I need to do is look at, first of all, where does lspp get set down here? Right, and so then what it does is it keeps on going until it sees a number. No, until it sees something that is non alphanumeric, basically. Right, so these are testing for various types of alphanumeric, as soon as it sees one of these, it says, alright, time to emit. What we're going to do is we're going to say, no, as soon as we know that we're doing LSPP, right, whenever we set the state to LSPP, we actually want to um, go now, right, because we know that that's the state we're going to, like, this state never transitions to another state, so it's time, when, as soon as we know we're going to LSPP, we're going to go into emit mode, and then we'll have an if afterwards, so we'll add in one more unpredict like, in mispredicted branch that'll say, hey, if the thing we're looking at is a preprocessor, I want to do this. If the thing we're looking at is a keyword, I want to do this. So that one extra branch there is going to be a little, is going to cost us a little bit, but it's going to cost us a lot less than the work that's actually being done here, and um, it won't slow anything down in this region. In fact, it might make this thing simpler since it can do um, less iterations through this particular one, right? Um, it'll make this even a little faster, possibly, potentially. Maybe we need less states or something, right? So. Actually, that's a good thought. Maybe we have too many states because we transition. Okay, so let me note to self: we probably have more states than we need. If you don't, if some states are just end states and they don't actually have non-end versions, so we need to reduce the state table too, or the state list. Ooh, how are we going to do that? 
would it matter if we did that? Is the number of states actually costing us anything? I'll have to look and see if states cost us anything. Um, other than like potentially blowing out the um, cash line mm, more often. Yeah, if we have more states, but yeah, I'll just need to make sure that there aren't any states that don't actually get used in there. Like, if I have states that are only terminal, only have a terminal version and not a non-terminal version, I want to actually make sure I'm reducing those. Okay, good thought. Um, which means I'll have to re-emit the enum anyway and use that version there. All right, we'll get to that sometime. But that's not what the that's not what the point is today. Um, today, what I want to do is let's say we see a pound. If we're in the default mode, then what we're going to do is say oh, so here it's eating up all of the space and staying in pound mode. I'm not sure that that's the behavior I want. Interesting. So what happens if I'm in LS pound when I emit a token? Yeah, I feel like this is all wrong. What I actually want to do is say um, that we should rethink this first. So it's coming through here. It's eating up all of the spaces and staying in this state. If it sees a new line, it emits an LS pound. But an LS pound would come through here and say, oh, that's either a preprocessor concat or a preprocessor stringify, stringify. But if we were in this state, that's neither. It's just junk, right? So we don't actually want to stay in pound here, I think. I think what I want to do is say um, start and c equals so c equals blah, blah. we're skipping all the white space again then we assign junk right so what I want to do instead is basically say let's try um, this world where all of these things go to um, So that should have given me a new table. Now, tool that I need in four coder. The ability when a, when I meta generate a file, I want to be able to take the diff between the two and show them to me bo both of them to me so that I can see what has changed and make sure that the changes make sense. But for now, we'll do it by hand. I just changed the behavior of the table um, in main um, FSM so that um, when it's in one of these states it um, well yeah there's no way I'm going to be able to, to to verify this by hand so just forget that um, but that's okay this part here will still do everything it needs to do Abner Coimbra hello thank you for joining us all right, so anyway, I'm going to give that a run real quick. It might be in like speed test mode still, so I want to take it out of that mode. Okay, we're back to testing for correctness. without chunks experiment all right so that says that we're still correct which is a uh, awesome it also means I don't necessarily have the most thorough testing thing possible but I think that that's actually still the correct same output I was getting before it's just a different w by a different method <sighs> all right um, Okay, so once we are in this 
situation. Um, we now know that that, if no, not new light, I want to see the generator. Yeah. Okay, so that's just gone. And, oh shit. There we go. Can never tell. Okay, um, so that's just gone, and then, um, So now, who can transition into LS Pound? There's just one guy, right? Just the one thing can transition to LS Pound. Um, I feel like that should transition straight into... Um, P, um, the PP state the first time through. Actually, so it'd be more like if PP state equals LSPP default, then do this other thing that otherwise do this normal thing, right? So it's like that, and then here we're gonna do PP, and now we don't actually ever have a case. Um, a PP state doesn't actually use this state. Um, so one thing I could do is I could also say make sure that state so two notes to self. Let me. Let me put some notes to self here in the notes. Um, um, actually, more like to do, honestly. Okay, so this is going to be a long one. I should get in the habit of using block comments where they will be useful. Okay, so um, reduce away states that only ever show up as terminal states. Reduce away states that cannot ever be reached. Output new enum that only includes the reduced states. How to name these things so that we can deal with different PP states that want very similar FSM main states. Okay, um, so there's some ideas I need to work on in the future. Now, um, Let's see, let's see. Um, how to name these things. Da, 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 da. So anyways, I was looking at, I want to do LSPP stuff. Right, so now I should hopefully still be correct. I've got a new table again. Ah, I'm failing one now. All right, we need to find out which one it is. So, experiment. I know which one it probably is, but I want to see. I want to see which one it is. One of these will be a failed. Oh, uh, here it is. Junk.cpp. All right, that's a. That's not the one I had in mind, but that is the second most likely one that could, could have failed me. So there we go. Let's do that one. Yes. Okay. So we have type mismatch at token four, um, and arrange mismatch. Dollars. No, ori error. Original testing. Okay. So I I didn't keep the whole thing together all of a sudden. Let's go look at the test data.
All right, so it's telling me that it didn't handle that space correctly anymore. Interesting. Oh yeah, that would be expected, right? Because I'm in the middle of changing some how that works. And I took out the pound part, which was actually the part responsible for consuming white space. And so now LSPP is responsible for consuming white space. Let me look at the generator, actually. LSPP is responsible for consuming white space, but it doesn't because after the first bout of white space, more white space would be inaccept unacceptable. So I would actually have to split that into two states, which would be not what I want. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead. We won't be able to make this correct until I just go whole hog with my new idea. So we'll just stop trying to do that one. This little baby step's not going to work, but the, the next step forward will make it work again. So we'll just go ahead and say, look, if actually we can go even farther than that. If we ever transition into LSPP, then emit the token right now. Okay. There's an idea. Perhaps a lookup table to convert back to canonical state or um, enum values after the FSM is finished. Q mark. Okay. All right, next up. Um, uh, da, 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 do. Um, how about uh, um, yeah, so we we're looking at LSPP. We're saying, look, if we ever transition to LSPP, we just want to go ahead and say um, emit that token now. Right, so that'll break a lot of stuff. But that's okay. We're going to make it work again. So what we're going to do instead is say, look at the new lexer for a little bit. When, whenever we were emitting a token, we were saying like, hey, look, what did we just emit? And then we were making a decision on what to do afterwards. Now this part here was all a bunch of um, like nasty, like searching back through the string again. I had to store a copy of the string on in this little spare space string right here, and then I had to read that copy of the string and see if you know, it... Hold on, what was that? What just... What was that all about? I don't know. Thought I heard something fall. Oh well, I'll ignore it. So, um, I was copying this, this string, you know, and reading it, and then checking it against all of the possible preprocessor things. Of course, after skipping the leading white space, I was checking against all the possible preprocessor um, directives and seeing which one it was. But now what I want to do is I want to do this step as a finite state machine. And the way that'll work is we've seen a pound, and then we said, all right, everything after this, treat it as a finite state machine. And then the finite state machine is going to go right here. So what I need to do is I need to find ls int because ls int number. Maybe it's a number that I want. Yeah, so this is an example of what a finite state machine looks like for the code for a finite state machine. So this is kind of what I'm going to do here. Um, this is going to be FSM directive state equals F FSM directive default. Emit token equals zero. Um, do I S? Okay, so I want to repeat the lap. A separate machine. In this case, I don't want to re repeat that character. Um, I do want to repeat the final character, though. At each step, I want to look at the directive state and compare it to the dir ls dir count and check the, that I'm not out of space. On update the directive state with the directive, the PP directive FSM table, directive state, 
um, PP directive FSMEQ classes. Yep, that seems fine. Um, to look that up, add them together, look that up, update your state, continue the loop, look up the next character, etc. All very, very cool looking. Then do count there. So if we get past that, then we are emitting this token. We're going to need a new yield point. So there's yield point six now. Otherwise we break and go back a position when we're done. Yes, that corresponds to that one. Okay, so now the only problem is the PP directive does not exist, right? Yeah, so all those things aren't in there. So now what we're going to do is look at fsms.h. Uh, we're going to look at int state. Yes. Okay. So this guy wants to be expanded now to have a directive state. And really, these can all kind of be union because these will all serve the exact same purpose. And only one of them will exist at a time. Probably even state could be union in there. We'll see. Now, here's where my int state hangs out. I'm going to call this lex directive state. All of the mentions of ls int will become ls dir. And then all of these can just go away. OK, so the problem is, though, that I don't want to do this by hand. Because look at this. Look at this. Look at this crap right here. Look at this. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen different terminal states that I could find. That makes twenty eight different paths, valid paths through the finite state machine. And, um, some of them overlap, like if, if and def and if def all look very similar. Elif and error both start at the same character. Undef and using. Um, I don't want to have to figure all this out, right? Import starts with an I2. I don't want to figure it all out. So what I'd rather do, what I would like to be able to do, and this is where we get to the fun of today, is to generate a finite state machine from a list of input lexemes and the terminal states that I want them to go to. That's what I want. So I don't want to have to write the function like I did for the first time through. The first time I was practicing, I got my hands got my hands a little, you know, dirty in there. I wrote the finite state machines as a switch, but I'm over that. I want to turn that code there into a finite state machine and then op send it through the finite state machine um, table generator thing that I built. So there's the plan. Now, how is that going to happen? Well, all this is really is, an, is a tree, right? Each possible character I start okay all right here's what we're gonna do it's gonna be a bit of fun so um, just to get this thing started um, uh, generate FSM we're gonna just sort of do it in a literal symbolic sense for now like modeling the exact mathematics and as I see ways to optimize it if I want to I will so um, we're going to have an FSM um,
Yeah, okay, so we'll have an FSM state, which um, basically is just a bunch of transition rules. So um, something like um, a bunch of integers, uh, 256 of them. So uh, transition rule 256, right? And um, so each state, each live state in the system will ha um, go like that, and then um, oh, dude, that's so cool. No, 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 that, no, 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 forget that part. <sighs> There's something cool we could do, but I am not going to go that far yet. Okay. So what I want to be able to do is um, build an entire FSM, which is just a bunch of FSM states. Um count max, right? And so that'll go like this. Dot max equals, let's start with a um, hundred, and hopefully that's enough, right? Count equals zero. FSM dot states equals FSM state malloc something the size of an FSM state times um, FSM max, right? That's a little, that's a little bit of memory, but it's you know not terrible. It's on a real com on, a, on a modern computer. It's still only like a hundred kilobytes. Who cares? It'll get freed when we're done generating this table anyway. Um, yeah, so. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get a copy of, we want to mem set all of that to zero first, I think. Okay, cool. And then I want to, I want to get one FSM state and call it my root state. Right. And that'll be where the whole thing starts. That's at position zero, so that makes it your default. So that's how you get these things up and running. And now, um, Okay, so the first thing I want to do, actually, now that I think about it, is um, we need a a, def a way to come up with terminal states. So, yeah, and that's why I always said have these things. Okay, I got it. So what we'll do for now, since I'm encoding this um, right here, we'll have this be an unsigned int, and then it's terminal if I set the high bit to true. So that will be my thing, right? Terminal mask is just um, Like that, right? 
Okay. And then I can just come up with... Yeah, okay, that'll work. Alright, so, um, the idea is I need to be able to allocate out terminal states starting from zero. And so what I'll actually do is I'll start off with terminal mask and just add up from there, right? So that'll be my zero with terminal state. And so the first one will be junk. Zero will be the junk terminal state. And then the other ones will be these in the order that they get encountered. Um, so what I probably want is a way to do um, uh, CPP um, no let's just call it int um, terminal to um, terminal to um, type array and there's what are the I said 14 plus that one I'll just make it like um, 32 that should be plenty and then um, whenever I want to set one of these things aside, we'll, we'll set you to zero to begin with terminal state equals zero and so then terminal to type uh, terminal state or terminal count we'll call it equals CPP token junk consign the terminal state terminal okay terminal count so the first one we create is um, junk right and then what we can do is say all right um, there's a uh, for the default state, we're going to have to pl plug in some rules by hand, I think. So, um, basically, um, if I'm looking at the transition rule, um, well, let's say that all things transition to junk to, by default. So, actually, this memset is just um, not ne necessary. And it's more like... Um, We look at all of the 256 spots inside this ter this state, and we say, look, by default, all of these transition rules um, end you up at, um, we'll just call it terminal mask um, or zero, which would be nothing, right? Okay, so there you go. And then we'll have a few that don't by default. Um, basically, the various white spaces that don't lead you to junk. Um, so space would lead you back to um, default, um, as would. And then I need to take a look at LSPP real quick. What does it say? So space sends you back to zero. Tab sends you back to zero. Re carriage return back to zero, vertical tab back to zero, and the F thingy, whatever that is, takes you back to zero. So all those map you back to a default state. Um, what else do I want to make sure of? Those take you back to a default state, and then I think after that, the only thing left to do is for each input, po for each possible input, we want to see. Um, what set of these things is still possible? Um, so that's where we have to do some other tricky stuff. Um, I'm not sure if the data structure I've built is the one that I actually want for that. Let me think. Um, let me let me draw this as a picture since I I don't have it fresh in my head right now. What how exactly this needs to work? No, go away. All right. So we know that there's a default state. Here it is. And we know that with each, what we're going to build is going to basically look like a tree. So that for each possible input, we go down a certain branch of a tree. And there's also a junk state over here. And we're always possibly going to go back to the junk state for you know any particular input. 
Um, but our life is made simpler by the fact that we know we're never going to go backwards in our tree. Um, right, so it's possible that like all of these have things that map back to junk. So I'll leave that out of the picture because this is kind of a special case that is not that hard to deal with. There, are, we've already taken care of the cases where things map back to this, um, you know, so that we can loop through all of the spaces at the beginning. Um, but um, um, do do do. So, for instance, include and uh, and if and if and def and, and if def, they'll all see an I and go this way. Whereas undef and use will see a U and go this way and so on. So what we have is up here we have a list, right? So we have what is basically a list of all the possible indexes, and there were 28 of them. So it's like one through 28, and that is. Um, what we possibly are still parsing at that point. Then here it's like, oh, you're now possibly parsing one or five or six or seven, right? And that's it. And over here it's like, oh, you're possibly parsing four or eight, right? Something like this and so on. So um, we want to be able to build out this tree by testing each possible input against the array. And in that, and in that way, seeing which um, which inputs all are still don't exclude a certain thing, and then do that from here on character two, and so on. Okay, so I see what's going on. This is character one. This is you know index equals zero. And what we do is we test index equals zero for each one, and so we make a different state for each possible value there. And then we do the same thing for the next one, right? We look at the next possible um, branching out. Do, 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 do. That's index equals one, and so on. Now, what I don't know is if this is going to end up creating too many states. It totally could, because we end up needing at most one state for every character in this list here which is like 28 times like I don't know at worst like 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 6 times 28 it would be a little less than that because some of those are less than 8 long and obviously there's overlap but 6 times 28 still doesn't even blow out um, an uns uh, a single byte so for preprocessor it should work Maybe not keyword, but we'll see when we get to that. Um, anyway, um, yeah, let's take a look. So what that basically involved was I need I need another structure that looks like this. Um, word match or word node match node and a match node can contain um, an array um, so matched um, words and a count of that array and it also needs to know what index it's at. And then we also want the ability to say that these things form a tree, right? That's why it's node. So we have child um and siblings so that we can have an arbitrarily many siblings at each level and then once count gets down to that one yeah okay we'll see if we can make it work with this so what that basically means is I just want to 
Um, grab a bunch of these match nodes right up front and hopefully not run out of them. Um, um, yes, yeah, so match node uh, nodes. Well, we'll do it this way. This is the way I usually like to do it. Match tree, match node nodes, count max. All right. Match tree. Call that our match tree. And then right here, um, FSM dot, or not FSM, it'd be match tree dot max equals, hopefully we can get it done in a, well, 200. Um, I'll set this to 200 too, because I think I might run out actually now that I've done the math. Count equals zero. And, um, mem size equals the size of a match node times um, the match tree's max size and then I want to set the match trees nodes to equal a malloc mem size there we go okay so now um, I want to add in little helpers here so that it's like um, Um, FSM state um, get state FSM and I want to do that so that I can assert that count stays less than max um, at all times while I do this, so then I can just do result equals FSM state, FSM count plus plus. There we go. And then down here where I get that, that is just a matter of saying get state from my FSM. Oops. And the same thing again, I want to be able to do um, match node. match get node match tree here's your tree um, here's your match node um, replace the word FSM with tree everywhere and someday metaprogram a dynamic array so that doesn't have to happen all the time Okay, um, get the node. Right, so starting right here, what I want to do, and what I could really do is I don't know if I, yeah, I have to add that in. Okay, match node, um, root node, root node equals, um, match get node here's the match tree I'm just call that the tree I don't really like typing the word match everywhere here's the tree all right so we can get a match node and then um, I should set that node to have some properties I suppose um, what is a node? Oh, I don't want to have to allocate that every time. Okay, yeah. I'll just do uh, words. Uh, well, we'll allocate it. We'll allocate it every time. And then what I'll do is I'll say um, Um, 
when I get a node a node will look like this match node here's the node um, here's the size or uh, match count and um, the index I suppose well I'll just say match count because I don't really care about doing the rest of that inside there. I just don't want to type the malloc more than once in the various places. So um, node words equals int star malloc size of int times the match count. And then while we're at it, we can set the node count to equal the match count. Okay, so that can init the node's memory. Everything else will still be knitted outside, which seems fair. Uh, we can even go so far as to say that we clear it to zero first, just to, just because I like that kind of thing. Um, okay, so I get a node, and. Um, you know, actually, I think I want to, now that I'm thinking about it, I want to put this in the get state part. Just a random thought popping in my head here, but um, anytime I get a state, I want it cleared to zero, so, or cleared to um, going to junk. So that's what I'll do. So I reserve that first token for, that first terminal state for junk. I fill up the other ones. makes more sense. Now I get a root node from the tree and from then on what I want to do is say we need a stack of which node we're looking at next or we can use this with a call stack. Yeah we can do this with a call stack. So um, process um, match node root node put that all into this finite state machine right here um, and here's the tree that you come from right okay so then what we have is process match node which takes in um, a match node um, a match tree and an FSM um, an FSM Right. Okay. So now to process that node, oh, do you know what I need still? Is I need to figure out how I'm defining these string and flag. String and flag. Does anyone have string and flag sitting around? Okay, so. Um, fsms.h, is this the one? No. Well, yes, we'll do that, I guess. Hold on, does the generator include the types? No, okay, fsms.h then. You can have the string and flag struct right there. Now back to the generator. Okay, so we also need to tell it um, what array to read out of. So string and flag um, input and input, well I'll just call it count, because I don't have that name actually used yet. So down here I want to tell it to use, um, I think it's pre-props string, yeah pre prop strings. Alright, so where is that? Uh, you. Pre-props strings, 
array count preprop strings. There we go. So now, um, for each step, what I want to do is look across all of the strings um, at the current, um, at, the, at the next index, right? So what that means is root node wants to have his index at negative one, actually. Yes. And he wants to have, uh, he wants to be initialized, match init node to this size here. And then I want to do Across that whole thing, just put in every single possible um, uh, every single possible index from zero to the end. So root node, what is the name of this thing? Generator. Right, okay, so that initializes my root node pretty well. Um, should have those cleared to zero, that'll be a negative one, and so on. Right, so then I go to process the match node, and what I do is I say, what's the next index I'm going to look at? So I figure out um, next index, which is just a matter of looking at the node index plus one, and then. Um, I want to do a loop across all um, let's see so what I'll actually do is I'll put these in last so that it can overwrite whatever happens to the root state by default okay that'll be cool so, um, we're going to, and that would mean we don't really need this, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll take that out for now. That, that actually doesn't need to be there. It's going to be a lot cleaner. Okay, so we are looking at the current node. We look at the next index we want to check, and then what we do is we say, okay, um, let's look at, um, uh, Guess we don't really need that, do we? Okay. Because we have the count from the node, which is actually the one we want to pay attention to. All right, so we look at each thing in there. And for each one, we get um, Right, so we take a look at the words, we get out the next word and store the in the index. Each word is really just an index, and then we use that index to get a string and flag situation right there. So um, uh, da, 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 do. we're gonna do right here. Let's do string and flag. Um, call that the SAF. So a SAF, we get it from the input J, right? Now the next thing I'm going to want is I need to know the length of the string that I just got. So that's just a matter of taking the, let's see, fsms.h, the string len of the SAFster, which is right there. All right, so now I've got the length. And um,
Yeah, and then what we can do is say, look, first of all, this only we only need to even think about this case if L is greater than or um, if next index is less than L, right? Um, so what happens in this case is that means we're able to index into SAFSTR with this next index. So we look at SAFSTR. Um, uh, I'm visiting each match, right? Yeah, okay, I'm looking at each match and I'm looking at the next index. And what I'm going to do is I'm building up a list of which um, Right, 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 right. So what I need here is um, next states. Um, there's not going to be any more than 256 of those. So I look at the the um, I look at the next character here, and I want to mem set next states to zero. So that initially it's all zeros there, and then what I'll do is say, um, look, uh, or actually next nodes Can actually do this one more simply right here. Clean that up. Next nodes. I have the ability to get a node from there, but when I do match get node, it gives me a pointer. So let's just store those as pointers actually. Um, this right here could just be next nodes. Whoops, match node array. Okay. And, um, Let's see, for each match node, okay, so yeah, what I want is an array of match node pointers, okay. What I do is I say, look at this new thing, right? This needs to go to some new node. So questions I have now. Um, oh, I don't know all of the matches for a node until afterwards. Okay, well, let's just move ahead with this. Um, so, if next nodes C equals zero, we don't have one yet, then next nodes C equals um, match get node, right? And I just give it the tree, it gives me a node back, and there we go. And then I need to, and this is the problem right here. This doesn't really work. Um, I mean, that works for one case, but actually what I want to be able to do is say that these nodes have um, the ability to expand. So I'm going to say for each one of these, um, that sets the max. And, well, we won't say they can expand, it's just we'll over-allocate them is what we'll do. That'll be easier. And so, yeah, so node, uh, or init node, it's right here. Um, I look at all of the words that I can match, right, and then I set root node count to the array count of pre-prop strings, because we literally filled the whole thing. And then right here, when I do match init node, I'm just going to take the node that I just created that's sitting here in the array. I'm going to tell it to use the count from this node, which is the um, 
match count, and I'm going as it's max, right? It's not its min, it's its max. And then I'm going. What's the other thing I got to tell it to do when I init it? Is there anything else I got to tell it to do? Nothing. Okay, so there we go. Now it's been initialized, and I can go next nodes C um, match add word. Here's the node. And what's the word? The word is word J, right? So you still match J. Is that you? There we go. So that allows me to put each word into a node that needs to carry on with that word in the future. Now, with the other thing that might happen is we might say um, look, if that doesn't happen, um, Then there's also the question of whether or not this node should have um, should have junk everywhere, or if it should be a terminal node, because like in the case of if, right, on other transitions. So, else if next index exactly equals l, what do we do? Because that means we completely exactly match to the word, and we want to do something special there. But before I do that, I think I want to change up one more thing about how this is working. I want these nodes here to not just sort of exist in this vacuum that I've created for them, but to actually um, own a particular FSM state the entire way through. And whenever I create a node, I'm also going to create its state. So then the next nodes, well we can do it this way. There we go. Dot state equals um, FSM get state. There we go. Get a state out of what? What do I get states out of? The FSM. There we go. So that gives me a new finite state machine. And um, The only question then is, as I check each, do I need to check each character afterwards? Um, to, to initialize the finite state machine, or do I fill it up as I go? What do I fill it up with? I think I fill it up with junk the way I had it a while back when I first get a state. So we'll put that back in. I take the um, states I and set them all to um, terminal mask to begin with. Okay, so that gives me a new state that's full of junk. And if I do that, then I want to say um, assert that unjunkify equals zero, and then set unjunkify to equal, and take the SAF um, flags, I believe, yes. And so then what I need up here is just unjunkify. Right? And if I go look, unjunkify, then um, what I want to do is for i equals zero, i, why is my i declared in the loop when everything else isn't? That's gross. There we go. While i is less than for i equals zero, while i is less than two fifty six, visit all those possible input values, and I want you to say, look, 
if the and now we have a node here so what I need is up here while I'm pulling things out about this node I have an FSM state it's um this state equals node state right so if this state um, transition rule and I think over here I said states and that's wrong it's transition rule I equals terminal mask then set it instead to equal terminal mask or the unjunkify value okay so now if the state I'm in currently is supposed to end a particular word exactly then that's what it's gonna do and now all of the um, all of the words are gonna have one extra state at the end of them which is just the way it's gonna be when we generate it this way uh, we could probably plan on optimizing it so that if we have one node if we have one word left when we unjunkify then we step back one and make that the terminal state and then we mark the ones that need to be stepped forward and not but that's like there's all sorts of other things I want to do similar to that that aren't being done yet so we're gonna hold off on that but until later and we'll just say that for now they all uniformly have to step back one once we recognize them okay so that does the job of processing one match node and as it's going it creates new match nodes for you know things that still need to match um, and aren't done matching yet and then what we need to do is say look um, if last um, if newest child equals zero then um, this node has a first child of um, next nodes C else um, the newest child's next sibling is next nodes C and um, and um, wait hold on Yes, that's a lookup table. It's not okay. It's not an L. Okay, got it, got it. All right, so that's how we do that, and then the newest child always becomes next node C. All right, so then right here we'll just hang on to this. What is Memset doing before the decimals are done? Get out of there. Next node or newest no child, which we will initialize to zero. So now what we have is we're building out this. Um, this tree underneath ourselves. So once we're done setting this state up completely, we'll just recursively go look. If um, if um, do, 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 do next no 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 if this node has a first child, then. Um, And what we want to do is, of course, right here, assert that the node's first child is still zero. And here we want to assert that the newest child's next sibling is still zero. So anyways, if we have a first child, then, or better yet, um, what we'll do is like n equals the first child at the beginning of a for loop. while n, n equals n next sibling, right? So that'll loop across all of the children if we have any. And then for each one of them, I want to process match node. And I want to process match node with the same input array, with n as the node now, and the same tree FSM. Okay. That's cool. So now the only problem is I don't have n declared yet, but we can fix that. Match node n. One sec. There we go. 
and um, about to interrupt to be a very long line. So there we go. Now we process this node completely, and then we process all of the children that we generated for it if we generated any. Um, okay, so now the only thing left is that whenever I see, aha, look, this match, we init a node, we make a new state for it. We're down here I'm adding that word to the list of things, right? So the other thing I need to do is say, okay, go away. Um, I also want to do transition add on the um, next node C dot, no, 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 on this, no, who is it, who is it, this, yeah, so the state, this state, I want to add a transition from C to, um, new, next nodes C dot state. There we go. So the way that'll work is um, FSM get state. FSM add transition. And I'm transitioning from this state on this input to this state. Now I think the problem is going to be I don't actually store it that way, right? I store it as an int. Yeah, I would need actually an unsigned int of that type there. So when I do, whenever I do, um, how do I want to do that? I'll just do um, FSM index. Here's the FSM. Here's the state I want that'll turn it into the right type. So this should actually be um, right here I'll need an unsigned int fsm index that'll take an fsm and an fsm state and it'll just return S minus the states, return the result, and then in here, state transition rules, C equals dest. There we go. All right. So I grab, I add the next, I add a word into the match tree, and then I add a transition into the finite state machine from the state I'm currently building out to the state for the transition node for the node in the match tree there. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. Um, right here I ask it to unjunkify everything and that adds a bunch of that just does all these things where I just am changing the terminal state of this if I don't transition to something else. And then if I made any children, which happens if I happen to not be done with it, or if there's a word that I wasn't done with yet, I made a child then. I loop through those children and process all of them. Awesome. So none of that builds is the first thing that pops in my head. So let's take a look at everything that I've screwed up in the last hour and a 20 minutes. Um, LSDER default, right. We don't actually have that by generator 32 um a uh, uh Okay, so somewhere along the way I decided not to include this, and that was clearly a mistake. 
uh, what's it called exactly? I'm not sure. Okay, I'm sure this is around here somewhere. There we go. Okay. Um, so, we got the types. Does that help you build at all? It does. What else do we need to do for you? Oh, you want me to look at types now. Is there something wrong with types? Oh, I see. Yes, that's concerning. Not sure why I went through all this trouble a long time ago. But now it's just stupid. So let's get rid of it all. Generator, what's going on with you, generator? Line 93, I'm not in the main code base, so I don't have a cert. Capital A, I have a cert, little a. I should standardize that so that I don't have to change back and forth in the future. Match node, tree nodes, 100. 107. One eighteen. One fifty eight. L equals string len conversion from size t to int. I'm not worried about it. Left of dot state, huh? What's left of dot state? Oh, you're right. That's not a that's not a class type. That's a pointer to class type. My bad. Two. Sort the young junkify. One eighty two is still a problem, huh? Unjunkify. I've declared it. Missing close brace before semicolon. Un on line 182 of the FSM table generator, you're missing a close brace before a, a semicolon. What are you talking about? Yeah, this agrees. It's spelled the same way.
Oh. Okay. So now it's just worried about the um, LS Dur stuff, which is fine. I don't mind. Okay. Um, now what do I do? Well, I need to run it and use it to generate. It's not generating this finite state machine, but I need a thing that can run the finite state machine and put it through the table generator stuff. But one thing at a time here. So I want my... Um, We're gonna call this generate. Um, I don't know something like the the PP directive FSM, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna return this FSM as soon as it's done with it. We will go ahead and um, just keep all that other memory sitting around because who gives a fuck? Not I. Okay, so we can generate that. Let's go over to main now. Whoops, that's not how I find main. Okay, take me to generator. Find me main. Find me like main, like as an int main, you know? I want the real deal here. Okay, so once that's all done, what I'd like to do is um, pop up here and go ahead and um, I guess we're using declare anywhere in here, so I'll just go with that. Um, um, generate PP directive finite state machine. 946, huh? What's, uh, what's troubling you, compiler? Oh, because I haven't referenced it. Fair enough. So then what I want to do is I want to say um, um, something like um, FSM tables PP directive tables equals um, abstract FSM to tables um, so then the input will be the PP directive FSM there. And let's go up, pop back up there to directive. Well, no, what I want to do now is look at the generator. Generator CPP. And I'll put the right one right here. We're going to just, we're going to just put this right here. So it's going to be like, um, FSM tables, abstract. Uh, well, it'll be more like um, how do I how do I normally name that? Generate table from abstract FSM. So that's what I'll call it up here. Generate generate table from abstract FSM. Pass in the abstract FSM right there. Um, let's see, let's see, uh, do, go check out something like generating the white space skip table, there we go, it's going to look quite a bit like that, only the rule right here, um, won't be calling a function, but looking something up in the abstract FSM. Okay, so here we go. Question number one, what is the state count that I need in this table? And the answer, well, the answer is that I need however many states are in the abstract FSM. Simple as that. Um, here's the table I want to return. So that's nice to have. 
and then I'll go ahead and say, all right, the um, the full transition table is going to come come in right right here, just like that, you know. And all of these things are probably just they all just flow from state count. So why aren't they pulled out into a function? You know, and what's the matter with you? Okay, well. doesn't have to stay like that, I guess. Yeah, okay, so let's pull that out for sure. Tables. You pass in an FSM table right here. And um, what is that, a state count? We'll call that unsigned char state count, right? And then all of that just pops in right there. All occurrences of table dot become table arrows. And then all of this just says bye bye. In fact, you know, we'll even put that in there. Allocate full tables. Here's the table of interest. Here's the state count. Presumably all of them, yeah, basically look like the same thing. So here we go. Allocate full tables. Here's the table and the state count. Yep, that's all the same. Here's the table and the state count. And that's all there is to that. So now, this new one over here, you just go ahead and allocate the table and the state count. And now we can go back up to the white space skip table part. All right, what's the next thing I do? Well, basically, it looks like I start with some int i equals zero. I need some kind of idea of a state that I'm in, which I'll clear to zero, and this new state. There we go. And then I'll do a loop, like so, across all of the possible inputs. And then I'll do another loop, like so across all of the states that need to go in the table and then for each one I'm going to say set well that state doesn't really need to be cleared to zero and that one doesn't either does it because it's really just gonna be like this actually we don't <laughs> we don't even need this one wow look at that Okay, and then what I'll do is um, the new state equals, um, I take the FSM, I look at the states, I go to the state, I look at the transition rule, and I look at the character. That tells me the new state. Right? And then I take the table that I'm building and I grab the transition table. I do an I plus plus right there. And I grab the new state. I put it right there. Don't need the multiplication thingy going on there. And then I generate all of the table reductions afterwards. Which just looks like this. All right. So 758 left of dot marks. Sorry, forgot that I had to turn dots into arrows for you, compiler. Didn't mean to confuse you. All right, I can see what you mean there, but it's going to work, I think, so don't worry about it new state 
Um, 913. Yes, I see what you mean. So let's take a look at transition rule real quick. All these things were defined as being ints, but I think that that was overzealous. It's only input char number of possible inputs that we're even thinking about here. Or no, 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 the possible states have to. We're keeping those down to to 256s in UMA. That means that the terminal mask. Oh, I see why that was the way it was. So what we really want to do is properly, I was thinking of this originally, we want to actually keep track of how many terminal states we've created and create them backwards, I think. Um, like, Or at least make sure that, 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 that they will fit into a byte with the states we're creating from the other end. And we can also say that we know the maximum number of states we want to allow. So um, match tree fsm int count, this can be an unsigned short or char and um, what we'll do is short well we'll do a char Ugh. we'll do a short and then when I set max equals 200 um, well I'll just leave that for now 118 unsigned short 118 now terminal mask is a bit concerning uh, because that that's the thing that I don't think is gonna work because that'll limit us down to 200 to 128 states which hopefully will we have less than 128 states I think we'll have less than 128 states but it's not guaranteed transition um, right that should be a char now 179 please just say plus oh, okay 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 so transition mask or terminal mask won't be a thing but we'll call it um, terminal base and we'll start it at 200 so we have 55 terminal values, which is more than enough, and we have 200 non-terminal values, which is more than enough in this case. But hopefully we can make that true in all cases. I'm not so sure that it'll work out this easily for normal keywords, because I think there are too many of them. Um, the, the straightforward thing that I'm doing here might not just translate, you know? terminal base plus unjunkify except that's not going to work because unjunkify could be grossly large but what we could do instead is make the the, the, the table that converts and we'll just say unjunkify um, um, allocate um, terminal states one at a time and have lookup and reverse lookup tables. Okay. Add transition. What's wrong here now? FSM index, you're returning the wrong type. 126. Oh, oh, I see. Boom. 191. Oh, and you know what? That's going to be a pain in the ass because of GCC. Let me go back to 126 real quick. There we go. 
Now 191, transition rule equals terminal. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and guarantee that we'll keep that small. 184. Unsigned char. Like I said, we'll get to that. We'll make it work. 964. PP directives tables. Now you're worried that I'm initializing that but not using it. Thank you very much for pointing that out. I will now use the table. So we've generated a reduced lookup table, a compressed, or like a condensed, not compressed really, but a condensed reduced lookup table. And so now we're going to put it out there. Get EQ classes. No, no, no. So what I need is how do I so render FSM table, I think, is the one I want, right? Render FSM table. Here's the file. Here's the PP directive table, tables. Um, and here is the name. It's uh, got it in new lexer already. PP directive. PP directive, I believe, is the name I want. Uh oh, it crashed trying to execute. So now I have to debug FSM table generator a bit. That's okay. I don't mind. All right, so let's open up. Um, Wait. All right. Why is this going wrong? Well, that's no good. How'd that happen? This state is zero. Who is this node? What is this node? Is this the root node? Did someone not set up a state for the root node? You god. Silly. All right. Here's the root node. Here's the state in the root state. Still not generating correctly. Tree count is less than tree max. Did our tree max overflow, really? Curious. I feel like that is too many recursions. So what's going on here? What is N? Next sibling. It next. So this one already has a bunch of siblings. Next sibling. Next sibling. Next sibling. Wait, these. This is just itself. It's just sibling to itself every time. You can't ha your next sibling can't be yourself. Okay, so I look at node. Who's node's first child? Two E eight A B zero. Two E eight A E zero. Two E eight B one zero. 
2e8, b4, 0. Okay, these are not the same thing. 2e8, b7, 0. 2e8, b a, 0. 2e8, b d, 0. 2e8, 7, 0, 0. 2e8, 7, 3, 0. 2e8, c6, 0. Okay, so I'm curious how many of these there are at each step. So every time I allocate a new child, I'd like to increment my count just so I can see it when it crashes. All right, what is count at this level? 12. Really? That doesn't seem right. So if I ignore capitals and then double it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, there should be six. And then I double it, I get 12. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's right. There's 12 on the first level. What about on the second level here? Let's count three. I don't know which. It's hard to say which we're at at any given point now. Of course, the other thing I don't know about is why this is so many layers deep. I mean, it still feels like that must be wrong. So let's take a look at that. So that 12 is correct, then three, and then we just do this perpetual loop. What is n at each step here? 2f8d80. Yeah, so I'm allocating a new one each single time. So I think what's happening is I go to do the first time through, and then I'm starting through here. Next index is less than L. Next, oh, 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 oh. All right, um, 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 the problem is that when I make a new node, I need to set its index correctly. So right here, whenever we've done all that work, set the next node C. Let me just make sure I'm setting everything for that node while I'm here. Generator CVP, node. All right, so, so presumably it's getting cleared to zero. So its index needs to be this node's index plus one. That's for sure, or in this case, next index. That's for sure. It's getting its state set. It's getting its index set. Its count and its max are both set correctly by the init as well as the pointer and the first child next sibling. That's all being set correctly, okay. All right, so that generated the thing just now. So let's take a look at the new tables file. At the very bottom, there should be some cool new stuffs. Uh-huh. Very cool. So that's 34 equivalence classes, which is a lot, but not so totally surprising. I wonder how many states it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 
29, oh, that's how many, that's not how many states there are, that's how many, um, I was counting how many, uh, equivalence classes there are. States go the other way across. There's a lot of them. Looks like more than usual, although that is, got a lot of 200s in it, which is not usually how I store these things. I don't store them starting at 200. If I look around, each of these is, um, well, 119. Is that the number of states? Is 119 the number of states? Is there a number smaller than 119 in there anywhere? Because that's going to default each time. I don't think there could be... Actually, why should that even... If, if that goes to default, that should be going to zero, right? If default... Seems like that should be zeros and that these zeros shouldn't be zeros. Seems like these should be going to... Uh, I don't understand. So that takes me back to default because it's a space, but only if I was in space. Okay, those are different equivalence classes. So here's EQ class 0, here's EQ class 119. I'm pretty sure that that means that there's 119 states, which is a lot. Hundred and nineteen states. It still fits inside of a cache, which is or at least one particular state does. Um although not, not an L one cache line. Just inside it fits inside a cache. It doesn't fit inside a cache line. Hmm. <laughs> Now I'm wondering if there are things other than 200 in here anywhere. I feel like that's probably not a great situation. Because I'm betting that those preprocessor things, well they might not be more than 55. I don't know, it's hard to say. And what I should do, I could just double check. Let's check that to do real quick. Because the easy way that that could resolve is if we assert real quick if this always is less than 55, then that will make my life easier. Oh, it's not. So what is that? Why is that happening? I wonder. Gotcha. Just too big. Okay. That's what I figured we would end up with. Um, so, what I can do for that is say that those things need to be smaller. It's not, that's one way to do it. Okay, so now that works. Tables.c, reload it. Yeah, now we got proper other things 207, 217, 214. So that's generating out um, all these different terminal states. I wonder why everything ends at like. Uh, how, why does that make sense? It's okay. So each of those is a particular right. So this is like the capital version. This is the lowercase version um, of the Q class, basically. Those are transitioning to junk. So that right there is junk. That right there is you know whatever CPP token two fourteen corresponds to. Um, this right here, this 118, is a real state transition. It transitions us to a different um, state uh, because uh, we have a ton of states. Alright, we'll try this first. 
If this doesn't work, there's another idea I have. But the most important thing is that I try to eliminate having to store a backup so that we can do like a backup copy of each token while I'm lexing so that I can handle the relexability. But first, let's see if this is correct, because it'll at least be cool to see that we were able to um, make that work correctly, I think. At least it'll be cool for me. Um, do, okay, so the point is we come through here, and we're still not building quite right. But that's because we don't have these things defined, and those are not named correctly. Okay, so... Um, tables.c, please re go to the bottom. Um, pp directive table, okay, so it just doesn't have the word fsm in it. pp directive eq classes, pp directive, F ta PP directive table, and then I want to generate out lsdir count equals zero and, uh, or lsdir default equals zero, lsdir count uh, is whatever. And then I want to do the logic afterwards that says, look, um, CPP token type equals um, S dot FSM. We don't even really need emit token equals zero, do we? I guess we'll do emit token equals zero. Yeah. FSM dot um, directive state minus 200 or yeah, minus 200. We don't have, we'll just, okay, well minus um, what's it? PP directive terminal base, right? And then what we do is we say if that type is CPP token junk, then s dot token dot flags equals zero, else s dot flags equals CPP T flag PP directive s dot PP state equals Do this step, which can obviously be a lookup table sometime soon, and um, let's see. So that takes care of that, and that we need um, this part here can just go right like that. So we check the type. Um, Yes. Okay, great. So that all looks like it matches now. And the only thing we need to do is generate those other names real quick. So, back at the generator. <sighs> Main, like the real one. There we go. I would like to add in render variable. Um, I need... Um, an unsigned int or what type do I want this to be? Unsigned uh, char um, lsdir default default um, zero and unsigned char lsdir count comes from the uh, direct no, 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 no. Yeah, the the PP directive FSM dot count render variable. All right, and let me pop up here to render FSM table real quick. So we take the file, we take a type name, we 
take a variable name and we take a value. And then what we're going to do is we're going to f printf into that file that 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 um that 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 and there you go right um yes that seems good didn't get terminal base in there though all right so we want to render the terminal base variable terminal base pp direct terminal base is terminal base number of flex data 585 alright s dot token flags there we go hey there we go let's run the experiment well let me go to code let's run the experiment I'm passing one test case. Let me see if I'm passing all test cases. Single item, false. I want all the items. I am passing them all. And I'm not sure if I'm faster or not, because it's always hard to tell on stream. Plus, I'm in debug mode. Just for funsies, let's um, we can at least give it a get get a rough idea if we sped up at all. So let's build that in O2 real quick. All right, and um, to really find out for sure, we need to change a few things about the experiment. So single item, where is that? Oh, it's right, right there in front of me. Okay, we want uh, we want a hundred repeats while we're testing. We want the rever verbose level all the way down, and um, doo -doo 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 -doo. right. So let's run this test first. Let's build that and compile in optimized mode again. Then run the experiment. All right, I'll take that. That's a high number. I like that speed up. Okay, and of course we've seen before you just can't trust on stream numbers. OBS messes with it too much, but maybe we can see that if there's a rough correlation in the increase here. So that's how fast it's been, around 1.9, given that change that I've just made to the preprocessor. Now let's see, trying the same thing um, when I switch back to the old uh, PP state stuff, which admittedly is not going to be quite even correct since I changed some of it but what I'll do is um, we'll just um, say that for now we want to see the speed anyway because we know that it's very close to correct and the only difference is a small thing that we're gonna just we'll just try to forget about for now so um, what we'll do is say look here's the normal rule for now just show me the time. I don't care if I got part of it wrong. Just show me. Uh oh. All right, let's try that again. There we go. Did it normally take this long? Something going wrong here? Forget it. I don't know what that was all about. But we won't test it, I guess, because I don't know what that was. 
don't know, maybe I should figure out why it went wrong. I don't really understand. I mean, it should still work basically correctly. We're still on the first repeat, so it's definitely infinite looping somewhere. <sighs> Sub match list. It's going across the list. 28 things to match against. Sets that token. Emits a token. Moves on to the next thing. Skip some white space. Okay. Reads in the pound. Oh, I see. It is totally broken. Right. Yeah. Oh well, I think that it's about the same speed, if I remember correctly. I'll find out for sure when I run it off stream. But I don't really feel like making it work again, because I see why it's broken. and We've changed it too far. But luckily, the new thing is c testing as correct, so not too worried about it. Okay, so let's take a look at the experiment file real quick. Um, I want to take out this nonsense here so that it goes back to only reporting if I have the correct correct solution. If I have a correct solution, and then um, let's see what next. Well, it looks like just the preprocessors alone have too many states. Um, for that to probably be a great idea. Um, um, boo, 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 Um, so, how about instead of looking at doing that again for the keyword situation, ah oh man, I don't see how I can. I'd love to be able to say you can just do a hash, but you can of course build up the hash, but you still need to save a copy of the string so that you'll end up having hash collisions that turn non-keywords into keywords. Yes, well, let's take a look. New lexer.h preprop strings. Yeah, here there's more like 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, blah, 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 on to like 50, it looks like, you know, for somewhere between 40 and 50 of these um, keywords that I'd have to put in. We could just plug it in and see what results we get. I mean, nothing's stopping me from at least seeing what happens when I try to generate, which is kind of cool. Generator. Alright, so pre-prop strings. Where are they? There they are. Boop. Here are the others. There's all sorts of reasons why this won't quite work right. First of all, the terminal states um, are going to be too large. So you go over 55. But oh well. Let's just run it and see what else we get. What other information we get? Process match node generate. PP directive FSM. Really all this needs to be is um, let's grab a copy of that right there. Generate FSM No, it's not actually quite that simple. Okay. Generate keyword FSM. Keyword FSM does not have this white space skipping at the beginning. Um, and other than that, it does not mention pre-prop strings anywhere. I think it's keyword strings. Yes. Instead it matchin mentions uh, keyword strings everywhere. So instead of Pre-prop, pre-prop, it's keyword, and instead of token junk, it's token identifier, generate pre -p -p directive FSM, alright, let's see if we can generate keyword FSM just to get information about how complex it is alright so to make that work I'm gonna need to have um, higher tolerance I don't think there's um, 55 different terminal states it's just that they you know I don't have a table so what I'll have to do generate keyword FSM um, is I'll have to first generate a two-way lookup table Pre-process match node, match init node, blah 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 blah. Okay, so what I need is something like the terminal lookup table, and the way that works is I say for um, i equals zero, i is less than the array count of keyword strings, plus plus i. If um, tape, uh, we'll call this terminal table, if the terminal table dot, um, basically a terminal ta lookup table uh, consists of a uh, couple of these guys so there's um, term to type which is limited at like 60 and there's type to or state to type and type to state which is limited at like CPP token count
then you do a loop across all of these things and you say, oh by the way, you also, when you first create it, you set the whole thing equal to zero. You have like a state count right here. Your state count um, gets set to one right away. So your terminal table um, type to state lookup. You look up the keyword strings i dot flags, and we're going to store that. So now we're storing the state and we're going to be able to go, hmm, if that state equals zero, uh, I see, um, If that state equals zero, then um, then that state equals the terminal table dot state count plus plus, and we say that the terminal table state to type lookup from state. equals type to state state wait a minute okay yeah so the state, and then we look at the, the type to, the state to type lookup goes like this. We go keyword, well, let's just store type right here. So um, state to type, um, is unsigned ints. So we look up um, the type, or we put, or we store the type, and then for type to state, we put in the type and we store the state. Okay. So that makes our lookup table, and. Um, the other thing we want to do is we want to assert at each step that state is less than 60. Okay. All right, so that generates a, a terminal lookup table. Now, what can I do with that? What I can do is say to, um, okay, first of all, terminal to type never really came to fruition. So let's just um, back off on that. Terminal. Okay. Now, when I go to process match token, match node, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, hey, look, here is a terminal to type lookup table. Okay. Now, obviously that isn't there, and it wasn't there on the other one, so I don't want to um, terminal to t terminal lookup table. Uh, terminal table. I'm going to make that default to zero. That way it doesn't have to be there. And um, there we go. And then when we're right here getting ready to store this unjunkify value, what we're going to do is say, look, um, 
we only want to do that some of the time, and other time we want to do that. And when we check this, we want to check against Unjunkify itself, not against anything else. Okay. Now, finally, um, right. So then, if we have a lookup table, what we're going to do is set Unjunkify equal to the unsigned, well we don't even need to cast, but what we do is we look at the terminal table and we look up the type state type to state yeah type to state and we go like that to get the thing that fits and we say look this is if we have a terminal table of a null pointer we'll do that version All right 362 Oh, shut up. 362. State account. Shut up. 392. Process match node. From int star stuff one two three four five terminal to type who who still has terminal to type I said specifically to get rid of terminal to type terminal to type there we go terminal table there we go shut up. 347. Oops. <sighs> Interesting. Now I'm curious. Um, I think that's about all I'm going to do on stream today. I'd really like to to get the whole thing working, but I'm just going to figure out what what's going wrong with that, and then that will be done. This isn't the one I wanted. All right, what went wrong? Undrunk if I came back as a ninety seven, huh? Terminal table is null. Oh, I know what went wrong. I know what went wrong. When I process a match node, I have to pass in the terminal table now. <sighs> now what? I think that's just a matter of there's too many states to generate this new table. So that's kind of what I figured would happen. I'd love to know how many states you actually need, but uh, I don't really feel like trying to make the whole thing work right now. So yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and say we're backing off on the keyword idea for now. I'll have to come up with an even more clever thing to do or something, but there we go. So we can find state machine preprocessor directives. Hopefully that makes us a little faster and not slower. I'll find out out after stream. And if I'm looking at my to-do list, I have a few things up here that are important. Uh, but a new one: How can we eliminate s.tb for keywords? They are too long for building into a F an FSM table. All 
All right, that's about it. Hmm. Mm. That is an interesting idea. I'll have to explore that next time. Ooh, Casey's just showed up. Casey's got a cool idea. What's the cool idea? I want to know what this cool idea is now. Yeah, so you're talking about like, um, if I'm sitting here and I'm like, well, that's not a great example. Let me find my, You're talking about when people do stuff like this, right? Yeah, so that they can remember what block they're closing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you could totally do that. You could say, um, what was like right after this you'd have like um, some ghosted text right here that's not instead of a comment it could even make it look like a comment I'm not sure which you would do something but it'd be like what was this if on and it would just show you what that was if on yeah that's a good idea that's even better than like brace matching normally brace matching is like oh what brace is this and you highlight it and then it highlights the matching one which is already a part of the plan but that's just like take it a whole step farther you can like go, hey, what is this matched on? And instead of seeing it highlighted, it'll highlight it and be like, here's the if condition and everything. That's a good idea. I could see that. Sure. All right, cool. Anyway, um... So I think I'll I'll run this um I'll run this little this speed test again off stream to find out exactly if it's any better or not. But um Yeah. So pretty cool. Hold on. Uh da, 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 where am I? All right, cool. It's still working. I couldn't remember if I had messed everything up or not. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.